So abiraterone is a drug that is a, a tablet, a pill. It was actually first discovered and designed and first generated at this institution, the Institute of Cancer Research by chemists here, particularly Jerry Potter, Mike Jarman and Elaine Barry. And um, this pill was designed specifically to inhibit uh, a key enzyme that is uh, involved in the synthesis of hormones, uh, particularly the androgens and the estrogens that may be critically important to drive and continue driving the growth of um, many, if not most, prostate cancers. Testosterone is the main male uh, sex hormone. It acts on the prostate um, to stimulate, well, to stimulate a normal prostate function. And in the case of uh, prostate cancer, it, it continues to drive the growth of many of the cancers. I became involved with Abiraterone seven years ago now. Um, just as I was starting a PhD in the ICR with Johan de Bono. From work we had done and, and several other groups were doing across the world, we increasingly realized that the androgen receptor, which is the receptor in cancer that binds to male hormones, remained important to the end stage of the disease that back then was called hormone refractory prostate cancer. So we started looking around for ways we could test this hypothesis and one of the drugs that was out there that was developed in this institution was called Abiraterone. And with Johan de Bono, I wrote a protocol that allowed us to take the drug into clinical trials and start testing this agent in patients. I'm initially looking to, um, for the, the safety of this drug, working out how safe it was and what side effects we would see, um, but also asking the question about whether the drug would work. And the first three patients we treated was in December 2005, January 2006. And the drug was safe. We didn't have any serious side effects in, in any of these patients. And importantly, we also saw declines in PSA, which is extremely exciting to clinicians like us testing a new drug, which we were still concerned um, or trying to work out the way it should be used and suddenly realized that this drug was also working against the disease even at low doses. And this drug can actually block the production of these hormones inside the cancer um, and that therefore that allows this drug to have impressive anti-tumor activity in men who have uh, really end-stage prostate cancer with no other therapy options um, giving them benefit with regards to symptom control, pain relief, uh, a fall in their PSA, sometimes by 90% or more in a good proportion of patients. Tumor regression, shrinkage on scan. In addition to declines in PSA, we also saw um, shrinkage on, on scans and a couple of our patients within one or two months were feeling better. Um, there's, there's one patient I, I, I recall who came into our clinic with back pain and th th this was impeding his work and he, and he was still, still in his 50s. And within two months of starting Abiraterone, his, his pain had resolved and he was back to full-time work. Um, so we quickly realized that this therapeutic strategy, this way of treating the disease, um, was very promising. These men with advanced prostate cancer would usually be receiving treatment with intravenous chemotherapy with all its inherent potential side effects. Abiraterone is an oral medication would actually very little um, side effects and importantly it does not have the side effects associated with chemotherapy and in fact indeed this drug is very very well tolerated in the phase three trials of over a thousand patients there was actually more adverse events on the control placebo arm than on the abiraterone treatment arm and actually you know we think that the drug side effects are pretty minimal clearly now I have led phase three trials that have shown a survival benefit imparted by this drug. But the impact of this drug will not be only for the late stage disease, the people that have no other therapy options, but also we are convinced for earlier stage disease and there's still a lot, of, a lot more work to do to show that this drug can impact potentially the outcome of men with high risk early stage prostate cancer and I would hope maybe increase the cure uh, and cure rate of men with early prostate cancer the way Herceptin has done for, for example, her to positive breast cancer. The second trial was actually an international collaboration involving Sloan Kettering uh, and UCSF in San Francisco. Um, and uh, that showed that actually this drug also had activity in men that had already had chemotherapy. And that was really a first that actually hormone therapy could still work and work 
impressively well after chemotherapy. We've now completed a 1000 plus uh, phase three trial showing that men who have had all the treatment options possible to them can live longer if they get this drug. So initially this drug is going to be utilized uh, in men that have no therapy options um, left that make a big difference to them. The work we did together with the US Prostate Cancer Consortium, which is PCF funded, um, was, was certainly shortened the time um, this drug has taken to get to phase three studies. The phase two um, study we, we did in collaboration um, with, with the US Consortium, or 55 or so patients started um, the clinical trial within a matter of months where most studies can run into a couple of years to treat that number of patients. So clearly there has been a significant benefit in the, um, the, the collaborative groups that have been formed in the US and together with us here at the Marsden um, that has allowed us to treat patients in such a rapid, rapid way. And uh, we've worked very closely with Howard Sewell and Jonathan Simons and others, and particularly the PCF-funded uh, consortium that Howard Shear uh, um, uh, leads in the US that involves many uh, US sites that helped us run this randomized phase three trial. So we're very grateful to the PCF for also spreading the news about this exciting drug worldwide, which uh, really, I think, increased the enthusiasm of our patients for wanting to be on our phase three trial, which was the largest and fastest recruiting phase three trial ever conducted in this stage of the disease, recruiting more than a thousand patients in less than a year, which is really uh, unprecedented. For several decades in cancer research, we have used drugs um, to treat a disease where we did not understand what the main problem was and what was really driving the disease. Now, in the Abaratron story, we used a drug to hit a problem that we knew um, we understood was there from key scientific experiments we and others had done and the positive results of this phase 3 study confirm that this is the way to do drug development. We are improving the outcome of men with advanced prostate cancer. That's actually abiraterone is one of several new treatments that have become available in the last two years that improve survival and prolong life. Abratron, Cabazitaxel, Provenge are all new drugs that actually improve outcome. And Abratron can prevent the cancer growing, can delay its spread, can cause symptom benefit, can cause the PSA to normalize, to fall substantially, the scans to get better, uh, and control the disease for a while. But importantly, we have increasing possibilities we're controlling this disease for longer and longer and it is our wish that with drugs like Abiraterone we can make this more of a chronic disease uh, and keep it from uh, causing suffering to the patient and maybe even eventually starting to cure more people with drugs like this. The, these new drugs have given increased hope. Well um, I don't have any dealings with patients, um, I'm purely a research worker in one of the labs but you do hear from the clinicians and it's lovely to hear when you get successes um, and one of the key ones was of a gentleman who um, had failed other treatments and is now four years on and still playing golf and is back at work which is perfect, it's brilliant. This feels good, this feels very good. <laughs> we are proud really at this institution where this drug was first made and designed that actually we think this drug was going to impact prostate cancer understanding and treatment really very, very broadly from diagnosis you know, all the way through the disease. 